to worship those in power. Many large enterprises were destroyed. Many business owners harassed. Many leaders subjected to humiliation, intimidation, blackmail, because their, their only crime was holding contrary opinions to those holding the levers of state power. A new frame of national unity was engineered in undemocratic and in terms which rationalized grounding and swallowing the whole opposition and the vandalization of the Constitution to accommodate corrupt and dangerous ethnic arrangements. At the same time, the Big Four agenda was abandoned, pushed into the back burner as execution of its flagship projects was left at the mercy of forces of emergent state capture. Those who remained loyal to our founding vision were shunned, hounded, threatened, and then persecuted. This is how we lost four years that would have gifted us with a brilliant blossoming of a beautiful dream which inspired millions of Kenyans in 2013. To his credit, my friend the President did inform me that he needed space to work on his personal legacy as the fourth president. I obliged, and this led to my eventual retreat to the margins of a government that I had participated in forming. The past four years have provided me special moments to be able to engage consistently with ordinary people. As Deputy President, I have worked directly with Wananchi, going to meet them in their villages, their markets, their farms, and their places of work, and to have practiced the leadership of listening more and speaking less. All through my political journey, I have believed in working with the people, listening to them, and doing my best to do what they want, not what I think will be a monument to my own achievements. I have learned that our plush, comfortable, secure offices are inaccessible to the majority of the people who need them the most. As a leader, this is a huge setback because it costs us the opportunity to be useful and effective. These engagements taught me a lot about things I thought I knew. Most importantly, they reminded me the most important question of all. What does the government do and for whom does it work and how therefore should it work? I was appalled by the intensity of contempt many have for ordinary people and their rejection of any suggestion that their voice matters. I remain sorrowful over the hatred in the language that proudly despises the poor, the struggling, the hurting, the lonely, and the abandoned. Many of us have felt the stinging lash of this contempt, and we all know where it comes from. Behind the shameless deception that national unity is the coalescing of a few leaders to organize their selfish interests in an implacable sense of exclusive entitlement to the privileges associated 